Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I am going to teach you how to cake the Big Apple. Not New York City, a Big Apple. To begin making the Big Apple cake, we need to bake 10 pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake batter in four round pans. Professor Cake, I brought you a gift. Thank you. What a beautiful shiny apple. What's your name? Oh, apple. That's very original. Once the cakes are baked and cooled, we're going to remove them from their pans, level them, and remove the caramelization from the bottom. The next thing I need to do is simple syrup all four layers. Who can tell me what simple syrup is? Uh, water and sugar. That's part of the equation. What is done to the water and sugar? Oh, Jeremy. Boiled water and sugar. Boiled water and sugar. Boiled water and sugar. Jeremy. I put my hand up. She didn't. That's not how you get it done. You don't put your hand up and wait. You just say it. Yeah. No, you put your hand. You, I can tell what kind of student you are. Okay, so now that the simple syrup has soaked into my four vanilla cake layers, I'm going to stack this cake in two parts to begin with. Two of my cakes are eight inches round and two of them are nine inches round. I'm going to sandwich them together with some Italian meringue buttercream. I built this cake in two parts because I want to create the center with seeds, just like a real apple. And if you cut an apple in half horizontally, you can see that the center is like a star-shaped center that holds the seeds. I believe the technical term is star-shaped center of apple. Do you mean the core of Professor Cake, or? I see you have your phone out, Jocelyn. There are no phones allowed in class. Oh, okay. Now that both my cakes have chilled and the filling is set, I want to stack them on top of each other just the way they are, stacking the bigger cake on top of the smaller cake and begin to carve the Big Apple. Da, da, da. Orhan, insert Big Apple music. What can I say about carving an apple? Apple really helped me. <laughs> Thank you. I rounded out the top, carving away slowly. I made a valley in the center where the stem will later go. Only in New York can you find Broadway. You see how they like indent? Oh, yeah. And then they kind of have feet. Oh, yeah. But something weird happened. Oh, no. I had a really hard time carving an apple. It's so interesting to me when I make a cake that I think the carving won't stump me. And then I start to carve it, and I'm like, why doesn't it look like an apple? At one point, Jeremy asked me if I was making a molar. <laughs> anyone is interested in seeing me make a giant molar cake, please leave a hashtag below. Hashtag giant molar cake. And should it have a cavity? I decided to just taper this apple in a bit more. I think that's where it's going wrong. I need to make it look less like a molar, more like an apple. And when I'm happy with my shape, I take the top cake off the bottom cake and flip it over so that the flat side is up. And it is time to create the star apple center. I'm actually using a calyx cutter that I have just because it has five petals like the star in the center of an apple. And then I used a leaf cutter that I had that was the perfect sort of teardrop shape to indent five teardrops in the center of each cake. Now I'm going to scoop the cake out of those teardrops using just a simple metal spoon, scooping it out and essentially what will happen is now that both halves have these indents, when I line the cake up together, that will make up the core. <laughs> I want to line these cavities before I put the... Are they secret chambers? <gasps> Yes, I got something right! Excellent, Woo! Jocelyn. I'm Woo! glad you're paying attention. That was a test. <laughs> Once the apple secret chambers are ready and carved, I want to coat them with a little bit of chocolate. I just melted some white and I actually added a touch of green because it always has that fresh look. 
It was very subtle. And what I did is brush that chocolate on to each one of the secret chambers with a paintbrush. This kind of works like a crumb coat so I can place my seeds in neatly. Before I place my seeds into the secret chambers, I want to spread a little bit of Italian meringue buttercream with a small offset spatula on that layer of cake. For the seeds of my apple, I chose to use Brazil nuts because the lovely brown skin reminded me of apple seeds. And then I took the top cake, flipped it over, and made sure to align the secret chamber. There was secret chamber aligning. This is an advanced class. <laughs> and yet they're still not. <clears throat> now class, I hope you've been paying attention. Now that my cake has been sculpted and assembled, what is the next step in this crumb process? Crumb coat and shell. Crumb coat and shell, crumb coat and shell, crumb coat and shell. Jocelyn. If you need help with your crumb coat and chill, we do have crumb coat and chill bundles at howtocakeit.com and we even have back to school bundles. When I went back to school, they didn't have pencils with cake puns on them, but now they do. We changed that at How to Cake It and they are in the back to school bundle. We should have a ruler with a cake pun. Definitely. Jocelyn, <laughs> Jocelyn, please call Connie after class. Thank you. Professor Cake, do we ice one more time? Yes, I'm we assuming. do, Jocelyn. There's no need for the back talk. Is there ivory in this cake? Ivory cake Nope. <laughs> there was a bit added to the colored fondant, uh -huh. but you don't see that because I pre-colored my fondant. I ice the big apple one more time with Italian meringue buttercream and place it in the fridge to chill. While my cake is chilling, I have decided to work on the stem and leaf for this apple. To make my leaf, I'm gonna roll out some green gum paste, nice and thin, and then I'm using an impression mat that I have. It's actually of a rose leaf, but I thought it would work here. And you just press your gum paste between these two mats to give them that veining that a leaf has. And then I trim the leaf to a nice shape with a sharp paring knife and dry it on some crumpled paper towel. You don't want a flat, hard leaf. You want a realistic leaf that kind of looks like it's already drying up a bit. Well, I know most of the time when you go to the grocery store, the apples don't have leaves, but I always find it really special when I get an apple that some of the leaf on it. Have we not discussed this before? I'm having deja vu. I think it was a different fruit. It oh, was the strawberry. It was the strawberry. The, the strawberry, strawberry is the opposite. Most of the time they don't have the stem. Yeah and then you feel special. With an apple, I feel special when there's still a leaf on it. When I'm happy with my leaf, I work on the stem of the apple. I used the same green gum paste that I just sort of lightened up a little, and then I rolled it into a cord that's just a tiny bit thicker at one end, trimmed it to the right length, and then I inserted a floral wire inside. This will help me place it into my cake and help keep the stem upright on the apple. I wanted to create a bit of a curve on the stem, so I just bent it ever so slightly. And then I placed the exposed wire down into a cake dummy to allow my stem to dry up right. I'm headed back to the Big Apple. I wish that was actually true. Right now I'm talking about my Big Apple cake and it's time to cover it in fondant. I rolled my red fondant into a large enough sheet to cover the whole apple. I then picked up my sheet of fondant on a French rolling pin, draped it over the apple and began to smooth the fondant onto the cake. This is really tricky because the cake is tall, it's narrower at the bottom, and it also has a valley at the top. So there is going to be air trapped under that valley. To release that air, I use a straight pin. I just make a slight hole in the center and then use my fingertips to smooth the fondant down, releasing the air through the hole. And you don't have to worry about the hole because the stem will cover it up later. Smooth the fondant all around the apple. This can be really tricky when a cake is very tapered at the bottom because you get a lot of folds. The fondant just folds up onto itself because there's more fondant than cake. So take your time and really smooth it around pull the folds apart and smooth the fondant to the cake. I did have some tearing and cracking in my fondant because it took a while to smooth all of it around the cake. This is really common with tall cakes and also I find when I have fondant that has been dyed or kneaded a lot, it can tend to crack a little bit more than untouched fondant. 
So what I'm happy about is this cake will later be painted, but I can also patch these cracks. Now that my fondant is chilled, I'm going to use some of my leftover fondant and make a paste. Listen up, there is a new, uh, Jeremy, I see you on your phone. What do I normally mix with fondant to create a fondant paste? Water. Thank you, Joss. <laughs> Jeremy, just, I think you should give up on the hand because it's not gonna work in this class. Alcohol, as we know, evaporates faster than water. That's why I paint with it. And I thought maybe that will help my paste dry faster and a little more matte. So that it went into all the cracks and tears and folds and crevices. You can just cover anything up. And it was incredibly hot. So what happens when it's hot is, and humid, the fondant, it can be very sweaty on the surface. And this sometimes, not sometimes, this makes it harder to work with. So what I did to smooth my paste this time is I actually used a damp or wet paintbrush. And in this case, I wasn't that upset about having to do this because it added to the texture of the apple. Look on the bright side. Sometimes things happen to teach you something. Those are called life lessons. And Jocelyn's laughing. I just love that you've tied fondant base into life lessons. It's that brilliant. is, for me, it's a life lesson. <laughs> okay, it's time to paint this apple. Food coloring is very intense, it's very concentrated, and it's always a little bit on the bright side, except for ivory. <laughs> To paint my apple, I actually created two paints. So one was some red food coloring and clear food grade alcohol. And the other was some golden yellow mixed with a touch of white and clear food grade alcohol. And this is to help make the yellow more opaque. First thing I'm gonna do is paint the entire apple in one direction, so that's up and down, from the inside of the valley all the way down to the bottom with my red paint. The next thing I'm going to do is then take some of my nice yellow paint and with a different brush, I'm gonna paint areas. Again, in the same direction, but not the whole apple, just sort of patches of this yellow paint. And that's because you, apple, please. You can see areas, right, on apple? Yeah, yeah. Like she's not just plain red, yeah. right? There's like spots of there's yellow. There's spots and there's like these little patches and variations. Thank you, Apple. You're gonna get an apple after class. <laughs> I wonder if apples eat apples. And I also used some of my yellow paint and speckled the apple. So just getting some paint on the end of my paintbrush and using my fingertip and basically flicking the paint towards the apple. If you'd like to pre-order my upcoming cake book, you can get it before it's even on the shelf through the links below. The book has easy to follow steps to make 20 new cakes never before seen on this channel, plus Walter, because he forced me. And I can assure you, the steps will really help you much more than I do here. <laughs> You're pretty good, yo. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But there's editing involved. Well, there was editing in a book. Okay, fair. Time to add my stem and my leaf, but before that, I do want to add a little bit of paint and color to those items. <laughs> items? Parts. <laughs> to those parts of the apple. To paint my leaves, I am using some dry green and yellow color dust. The same color dust I use on my strawberry leaf. For the stem, I'm actually gonna use some brown gel food coloring, just a dot of it and a clean, dry brush. And I'm gonna brush that gel on in an upward motion because when you really look at an apple stem, you can see that it is sort of a green base, right? This is the part that was attached to the tree. And then as it dries out, it starts to turn brown. So I decide on what part of the apple I like as the front, and then I insert my stem down into the center. And finally, I attach is your coffee good, Jeremy? <laughs> Did you bring me one? No. Actually, I never understood why people brought teachers apples. If I was a teacher, I would want you to bring me coffee. And then we're gonna add the leaf. My leaf was just propped between my stem and the top of the apple, but you can use a little bit of royal icing to hold it in place if you need to. This big apple is the perfect super shiny apple to give to any professor even though she'd rather have coffee. <laughs> if you're getting ready to go back to school, share this video with your friends. I hope it makes you feel better. Thank you for joining me on How to Cake It. 
Class is next Tuesday. If you like giant food cakes, there's a playlist right here, and there's also a back to school playlist right here that you can also share. Oh, and everyone, subscribe. You'll get an A plus. <laughs> <laughs>